Hello everyone, welcome back with the new lecture with ISO IEC 1725 2017 edition. In the previous two lectures, I have explained common requirements for all reports as general and specific requirements for test reports. In this lecture, I will explain specific requirements for calibration certificate and also for sampling report. Calibration certificates, it's only required for calibration laboratory. But for other laboratories, they will request calibration laboratory to to calibrate their equipments and you should know what are the informations should be there in the calibration certificate and also if you receive standards you will have calibration certificate for these standards including some informations so besides some informations from common requirements for all reports you will need some specific informations about calibration certificate so these are specific requirements for calibration certificates shall include the following point Measurement uncertainty. Measurement uncertainty is very important and shall be included in each calibration certificate. Standards or any equipments will be calibrated. You shall have measurement uncertainty in the certificate because you will use this measurement uncertainty to quantify the whole, the total measurement uncertainty for each analyte. And that will be used in case of time B evaluation as we explained before in measurement uncertainty calculation. Also, under which conditions calibration were made, such as environmental conditions? What were the environmental conditions when you did the calibration, such as temperature or humidity? Because these conditions may affect the calibration results, so it shall be included also in the calibration certificate. Also, meteorological traceability for results shall be included in the calibration certificate. A statement identifying how the measurements are meteorological traceable to SI units, International System of Units, or NIST, a National Institute of Standards and technology so you can write that values are traceable were traceable to national standards and national standard is traceable to SI units at the end so meteorological traceability is very important also in the calibration certificate also results before and after any adjustment or repair for the equipment if that's available as example if they did calibration for the equipment and that calibration was failed then they fix the equipment or repair it then they will have results also after uh, maintenance and the calibration pass already so they will have these results before and after and after repair and that's also shall be included in the calibration certificate if that's available also a statement of conformity that this equipment is conform to the specification after calibration calibration was accepted according to specific acceptance criteria according to the standard used and that also will be explained in 786 in details and opinions and interpretation it's in all reports if required by the customer and also will be explained in 787 Second point, if the lab responsible for sampling, calibration certificate shall meet the requirement listed in 785 reporting sampling and that will be explained when well, that will be necessary for calibration results. The last point, calibration certificate or calibration label shall not contain any recommendation on calibration intervals unless agreed with the customer. The due date for calibration of your equipment. Uh, after the calibration lab will calibrate your equipment, balance, microbiopet or whatever equipment, they will send to the lab calibration certificate including all of these informations and calibration label but on calibration label they cannot mention the due date for this calibration for calibration of this equipment after one year or two years whatever unless agreed with the customer and this is good point yani better to add the due date for calibration on the calibration label and also we have a specific requirements for reporting sampling sampling explained before in process requirement in details but here we have some specific requirements for 
your reporting sample when you will collect sample from any field you shall have a complete report about the sample type sample number and environmental conditions in, in the field and other informations also so these informations such as sampling report sampling the name is sampling report logo for the lab and issue date for that report and here are some information, some specific information. The source from when you collect the sample, receiving date and time when you collect the sample, when you collect the sample, so collection date also shall be available. And when the lab receive the sample by the specific time, because as I explained before in sampling, for some parameters there is a specific time specific time to be analyzed after this time it will not be fit for analysis and also we have environmental conditions what were the environmental conditions when you collect the samples because environmental conditions from temperature or raining or whatever environmental conditions may have effect on the sample and so it will affect on the result and also sampling date or collection date and due date due date for the sample or you can only keep receiving date there is no need for due date because each unit in the lab also they know what are the time required for their parameters to be analyzed and preservative added if you will add any preservative to the sample bottle before or after the sampling and sample sample type physical properties for the sample and sample number storage condition what are the conditions required to store the sample during the whole transportation and after receiving the sample also and all parameters after that all parameters required to be analyzed for this sample also can be can be in this report based on the lab requirement collected by home the sampler and received by home you can also refer that to the sampling plan and the sampling method you use inside the lab and as you know as we explained before that you will calculate quantify measurement uncertainty for sampling but there, there is no need to add measurement uncertainty in this report because sampling measurement uncertainty will be added to the total measurement uncertainty so if the lab is responsible for sampling they shall have a report for collection of samples and that report shall include the following points sampling identification of the items assembled, sampling location, reference to sampling plan and sampling method, environmental conditions during collection, measurement uncertainty information required to evaluate measurement uncertainty for testing or calibration. During evaluation of measurement uncertainty, when you will quantify measurement uncertainty for analytes, for testing and for sampling, you will collect samples. And in this case, information is required about measurement uncertainty but you don't need to add measurement uncertainty for sampling to the report of sampling you just need to calculate or quantify measurement uncertainty for sampling for individual analytes and then add this measurement uncertainty to the compound uncertainty as i explained before in the lecture for calculation of measurement uncertainty of sampling and new clause added to this edition reporting statement of conformity 786 statement of conformity as i explained before the conformity of the sample to a specification or standard if this sample will be accepted or rejected and according to which specification or deadline when a statement of conformity to a specification or a standard is provided in the report, the lab shall document the decision rule employed or applied, taking into account the level of risk. Decision rule I explained before in details, and in the next lecture, you will have a specific lecture for decision rule applied and in details based on I lack D8. And as you all know that decision rule will be based on the final result plus minus measurement uncertainty. You will send the result at the end, including final result for that analyte plus minus measurement uncertainty for that analyte. And the management will decide if this analyte will be accepted or rejected well, if this sample will be accepted or rejected and that's based on some parameters 
These parameters will be explained also in details in this in the next lecture with some rules, some rules explained in ILAC G8 explained in details. For these rules, for each role, you will have a specific risk. And these roles will be selected based on the lab requirement and also customer requirement. So in the second point, reporting shall include to which results the statement of conformity applied, specification used, decision rule applied, statement of conformity if the sample, the result, final result, plus minus measurement uncertainty, statement of conformity if that result is accepted or rejected, and according to which specification, so you will mention specification limit for each analyte, and according to which specification or standard or guideline, and also decision rule applied, the type of decision rule applied, and also risk shall be taken into account, and that risk, especially risk, will be explained in details in the next lecture. And reporting opinions and interpretation. Opinions and interpretation also as I explained before, for the lab and for the customer. For the lab, if you want to add, if the analyst have any information that will help the decision makers to take the decision about this sample, and also for the customer, if there is any opinion or interpretation for the result that will help the customer to understand the result, or it will make it clear for the customer. So 7871 shall be, opinions and interpretation shall be made by an authorized person, the person who is responsible for analysis of this sample, based on results obtained for tested or calibration items and shall be clearly identified that 7872. 7873, if that opinion or interpretation communicated between the analyst and the customer by dialogue, between the analyst or between the management and the customer by dialogue that shall be recorded. Record of the dialogue shall be retained. And the last point in reporting amendment to report and this is very important point how to make amendment for reports according to ISO document. When an issued report need to be changed amended or reissued. Any change of information shall be clearly identified plus the reason for change. You have, if you want to change any point in the report, you shall identify all of these points and why do you need to change these points. But amendment to report shall be made only in a further document. It cannot be on the same report. You cannot write all points need to be changed plus the reason for a change on the same report. It shall be in a further document, including a statement, amendment to report plus the serial number. As example for amendment to any report, amendment to a report number, this is the serial number, 234 as example, effective date, when you already applied these changes to the report was like this or when you will apply these changes changes are one two three or more as you like and each one you should also mention the line number for each change and the reason for change then revised by and authorized by, revised by the analyst or whoever responsible for that report and authorized by the management. And when amendment only will not be enough and you need to issue a complete new report when it's necessary to issue a complete new report, this shall be identified but shall contain reference to the original. As example, when you will make another report, a new report, you will make the original, if the original was 234, serial number so you will change the serial number for the new report it will be also two three four the same serial number that you will add and so it will be reference to the original report that was the end of our lecture for today and the end for reporting thank you and see you in the next lecture